Hello students, I am Dr. G. S. Sodi. Today I bring you the first learning episode of the paper Forensic Ballistics on behalf of the current tent writers, myself and Ms. Tulika Banerjee on an important unit which is Introduction to Forensic Ballistics. And in this unit, we will discuss about the introduction of forensic ballistics, its history and development various types of firearms and their firing mechanisms. We will wind up this episode with the application of forensic ballistics. Let us start with a look at what we are going to learn today. First, the introduction. Second, history and development under which we will deal with uh, Indian history of firearms, primitive weapons, modern weapons, then third is classification of firearms under which we will study bore characteristics, velocity, handling mechanism, action mechanism, loading characteristics. Then fourth is firing mechanisms under which we will deal with manual mechanisms, semi-automatic mechanisms, automatic mechanisms. Then fifthly, application of forensic ballistics and finally sixth is the conclusion. The science of mechanics dealing with launching, flight behavior and the effects caused by projectiles is known as ballistics. It mainly deals with the science of designing of projectiles to achieve the desired performance. The application of this science of mechanics in court of law is called forensic ballistics. Forensic ballistics deals with the examination and analysis of various evidence related to firearms encountered at a crime scene, including the effects and behavior of explosives and projectiles. It also includes comparison of bullets and cartridges cases and other evidence related to weapons or firearms found at the crime scene or acquired from the suspects. According to Indian Arms Act 1959, a firearm means a weapon of any description designed or adopted to discharge of a projectile or projectiles of any kind by the action of an explosive or other forms of energy including artillery, hand grenades, right pistols or a device designed or adopted for the discharge of a noxious liquid or gas. Firearms have been frequently used in the past and are continuously getting improved in their efficiency and working. According to a report published in the Hindustan Times dated 7th of October 1980, gunpowder was used by Indians much earlier than the Chinese. Sukraniti, a work contemporaneous with Manusmriti, which is assigned by many scholars as a work of 2nd century BC, describes guns and projectiles as the standard paraphernalia of a king's war chariot. Vishum Poyan, who is credited with the authorship of Yadurveda, also wrote Diti Shastra, which describes an account of smoke balls containing gunpowder in the weapons to be used against the enemy. It is believed by scholars to have been composed between 1000 and 800 BC. Operic G mentions that gunpowder is known in Sanskrit literature as Agni Churma or fire powder and the expression Nalika in the text refers to the guns made out of bamboo pipes in ancient India. He further adds that they even made elephants of clay which could be exploded from a distance through a fuse to destroy an invading army. 
China invented gunpowder and firearms in the 9th century and 14th century respectively. These inventions were later transmitted to the Middle East and Europe. Roman Candle Tubes The Roman candle tubes were devised by Romans wherein gunpowder was used for the first time in order to throw objects without any motive of hurting or injuring through penetration but only for the sake of fun. It was made from hollow tubes of wood or bamboo. The tube was loaded from the muzzle and with an alternative charge of powder. There was a gradual improvement and development of different locks such as the match lock, the wheel lock, the flint lock. But the use of these systems came to an end when comparatively better devices were innovated. These devices may be considered as the predecessors of the muzzle loading guns. For example, on pressing the trigger, a hammer would fall on the powder charge placed inside the barrel through the touch hole, thereby igniting it and propelling out the projectile. The paper pallet soon gave way to percussion caps where the composition was housed in the metallic cups. Percussion caps separately or in complete round formed an important part of the ammunition. The percussion system with the advent of the percussion caps also led to the modification of the firearms. Instead of a touch hole, a nipple was screwed onto the barrel. The percussion cap was placed on the nipple. When this was struck by the usual trigger and hammer combination, it resulted in formation of flame igniting the powder charge in the barrel through the nipple. This action differs from the present day muscle loader only in respect of the paper initiation pallet which is fed through the nipple. It may also be noted that a muzzle loading firearm has the barrel closed at the stock end and open near the muzzle end. Faster loading system. The biggest development was in respect of the speed of loading. The European type of weapons of these periods required bullets to be loaded as projectiles into the barrel with wallet and then punched down on the top of the charge with a ramrod. The Pennsylvanian gun makers introduced the idea of wrapping the bullets in linen or buckskin patches which had been soaked in tallow. This system permitted easier and faster loading and at the same time provided a degree of gas check. This device gave a greater degree of accuracy and a longer range. The sports activities of Romans resulted in the manufacture of muzzle loading guns and later on breech loading weapons in which a cartridge was loaded through the breech end of the barrel. This was followed by the development of rifle arms with which even distant targets could be aimed precisely. With the advent of automatic weapons, it is now possible to fire up to 10 cartridges in one second. The modern weapons, which can be easily handled, carried and operated by a single person, are called small arms. These include handguns, named pistols or revolvers, which are fired with one hand. Shoulder firearms are fired from shoulders and include shotguns, rifles and muskets and other firearms namely machine and submachine guns. 
the litter are automatic and fire large number of rounds in a short period of time. The firearms which are commonly encountered in crime scenes in India are shotgun and rifles, pistols and revolvers, submachine guns and machine guns. muzzle loaders and improvised firearms. The improvised firearms are also known as country made firearms, home made firearms and pipe guns. These firearms are made without any standardization by the ordinary blacksmiths. Freak firearms. Some firearms give innocent appearance of a pen, walking stick or an umbrella but can fire standard ammunition with an effective range of about 25 meters. Toy firearms look like factory made standard firearms but cannot fire any cartridges. Firearms can be classified on the basis of following characteristics. On the basis of bore characteristics, firearms are classified as smooth bore, those firearms whose barrels are smooth and cross section of the bore inside forms a circle at any point are called smooth bore firearms. For example, shotguns, muskets, etc. Rifle firearms, those firearms which have grooves and lands in their barrels are rifle firearms. These grooves and canals like furrows cut out in the form of spirals. For example, revolver, pistol, etc. On the basis of velocity, firearms are classified as low velocity. The speed of bullet when it leaves the muzzle is known as muzzle velocity. Hence those firearms which have low muzzle velocity are known as low velocity firearms. Examples include revolver and pistol. High velocity. Those firearms which have high muzzle velocity are known as high velocity firearms. Examples include rifle, light machine gun, heavy machine gun and so on. Then on the basis of handling mechanism, firearms are classified as handgun. Those firearms which can be operated with one hand are called handguns. Examples include revolver and pistol, shoulder guns. These are the arms which can be fired by using both the hands with the butt resting on the shoulder. These are long barreled firearms and examples include rifle and shotgun. Mounted gun, the part of firearm which is used to fix the firearm for stabilization is known as weapon mount. Those firearms which are mounted on a tripod are mounted firearms. For example, light machine guns, heavy machine guns, etc. On the basis of action mechanism, Firearms are classified as manual firearms, those in which cartridge is loaded to the chamber manually after firing of every round. Examples are revolver and shotgun. Then semi-automatic firearms are self-loading firearms like pistols. Automatic firearms have all the qualities of a self-loader. In addition, after firing the first shot, the firearm automatically goes on firing cartridges as long as the trigger is kept pressed and magazine is not exhausted. Examples include machine guns and submachine guns. On the basis of loading characteristics, firearms are classified as muzzle loaders 
A muzzle loader firearm is one in which the projectile is loaded from the muzzle end, for example, cannon. Then breech loaders, a breech loading firearm is the one in which the projectile is loaded from the breech end, for example, all modern firearms. Firearms can be basically classified into the following types based upon the mechanism. Manual mechanisms, semi-automatic mechanisms and automatic mechanisms. In the manual mechanism firearms, the important feature is that the cartridge is loaded to the chamber manually after firing of every round. In these types of mechanisms, the cartridge filled magazine is locked into the firearm if it supports auxiliary feeding mechanism from which every single cartridge can be loaded and fired from the firearm. When the part of the action is moved, it catches the cartridge from the magazine or otherwise feeding sections and pushes it into the chamber where it is ready to be fired. But merely loading is not sufficient to fire a cartridge. There are certain other parameters which are needed to be taken care of and one such factor is cocking of the firearm. In order to strike the percussion cap of the cartridge, it is important that the cartridge case should be in the line to that of firing pin and that firing pin must exert sufficient force which subsequently creates a primary detonation of the primer composition. Classification of manual firing mechanism. Manual mechanism can be classified into bolt action mechanism. Bolt action firearms operate by opening and closing a bolt. The bolt can be lifted up and back to see whether the chamber is loaded. Generally, if the chamber is loaded, a cartridge is ejected when the bolt is opened. In bolt action weapons, a turning bolt slides in an extension to the barrel. This is basically the same system as in turn bolt used to lock a door. Pushing the bolt forward brings the bolt face into battery with the breech end of the barrel and cocks up the striker or the firing pin. Turning the bolt then locks it into place via bolt lugs, engaging with slots in the barrel extension. The mechanism combines the firing pin, a spring and an extractor all contained in a locking breech block. Lever action mechanism. In the lever action mechanism, a trigger guard is fixed below the trigger in normal position. When it is pushed forward, a rod is pulled backward and it extracts the fired cartridge and cocks the firearm. Consequently, the carrier bolt is pushed upward which carries live cartridge. When the lever is brought to its normal position, the rod placed in the live cartridge in the chamber and in carrier block takes its original position and firearm is ready to fire. Once a lever action gun is cocked, the only way to uncock it is to clutch the hammer and pull the trigger. Slide action mechanism. In slide action weapons, also known as pump action or trombone action, the breech block is attached through operating rods to a movable fore end. On pulling back the fore end, the mechanism locking the breech block to the barrel is released. By pulling the fore end, to the rearmost extent of its travel and then pushing it forward, the empty cartridge case is ejected, a fresh round is loaded into the chamber and the action is cocked. Break action mechanism. A break action 
is a type of firearm where the barrel or barrels are hinged and can be broke open to expose the breech. There is a knob under the barrel through which a pin passes and the barrel twirls in this pin. There is also an aperture cut into the other side of the knob where the barrel is closed back in place. The user turns the lever in front of the trigger guard which pushes a projection into the slot thereby keeping the barrel from moving upwards. When the barrel is tilted upwards, the user can remove the old cartridges, insert the new cartridges into the barrel and then close and lock the mechanism. A semi-automatic or self-loading firearm is one that implements all steps necessary to assemble it to discharge over again after firing, assuming cartridges remain in the firearm's cartridge feed mechanism. Typically, this comprises extracting and ejecting the consumed cartridge case from the firing chamber, recocking the firing mechanism and reloading a new cartridge into the chamber. Although machine guns and selective fire arms make sure of the same tasks, semi-automatic fire arms do not automatically fire an extra round until the trigger is unconstrained and reconstrained by the individual discharging it. It simply means semi-automatic firearms fire only one round each time the trigger is drawn. While all elementary firearm actions necessitate the action to be cycled manually before the first round, semi-automatic as well as automatic and selective fire actions is distinguished from other methods such as single action or double action revolvers, pump action, bolt action or lever action firearms by reducing the need to physically sequence it after every round. An automatic action is one which continues to fire as long as the trigger is kept pressed. Thus, an automatic firearm is one that loads, fires, extracts, ejects, and reloads continuing the cycle as long as the trigger has been held in the proper position. Classification of automatic firearms. First, blowback action mechanism. In blowback mechanism, there is a heavy breech block which moves backwards and forwards in a receiver attached to the barrel. It is not locked to the barrel. There is a strong spring behind the breech block called the counter recoil spring or return spring. When a cartridge has been loaded in chamber and during firing, the breech block is not locked to the barrel. Second is recoil operated mechanism. In recoil operated action, the bolt and the barrel are firmly locked together at the instant of firing. When a firearm having this action is fired and there is high pressure inside the cartridge case, the barrel and the bolt both move backward. After the bullet has left and the pressure inside the cartridge case has reduced to safe value, the barrel and the bolt separate. The barrel moves to its original position but the bolt continues to move backwards because of the momentum it has gained and because of the impulse of residual pressure of the propellant gases inside the fired cartridge case. The fired cartridge case is extracted and ejected. Behind the bolt, there is a counter recoil spring. Because of the backward motion of the bolt, this counter recoil spring gets compressed and the firearm gets cocked also. This mechanism is used in pistols. Third is the gas operated mechanism. This action 
is used in most of the high velocity rifles like AK-47, 7.62 mm self-loading rifles and so on. In this action, there is a small hole drilled in the barrel and when a bullet is fired, the gases just behind the bullet move through this hole and exert pressure on a piston. The piston is connected to a bolt. The bolt gets unlocked from the barrel and moves backwards when extraction and ejection of the fired cartridge case takes place. The counter recoil spring pushes the bolt forward, loads a live cartridge from the magazine into the chamber and gets locked to the barrel. The operating rod and piston also move to their original position. The firearm can now be fired if it is in semi-automatic mode. But if it is in automatic mode, it will continue to fire till the trigger is kept pressed or the magazine becomes empty. The use of firearms in criminal offences has been frequently encountered. In fact, they figure prominently in most of the heinous crimes like murders, decoities, robberies, assassinations and mob violence and also in police encounters and firings. The firearm evidence therefore is important in criminal investigations and trials. The firearm evidence pertaining to their identification through fired ammunition is well established. It is now on the same footing as the fingerprint evidence. The individuality of the marks imprinted by a gun on a fired cartridge or on a bullet is universally recognized. The assertions of the expert that no two firearms, even of the same make and batch and manufactured one after the other, leave identical marks on fired ammunition are accepted like the assertions of the fingerprint experts that no two fingerprints from two different fingers, even from the same person, are alike. Convictions have been awarded and maintained solely on the basis of firearm evidence. It is however necessary that the link between the evidence and the culprit is properly established. The firearm recovered from the culprit which fired the fatal bullet or the cartridge case recovered from the scene should be proved to be in the possession of the accused at the time when the crime was committed. The firearm evidence helps to decide whether the given incident in case of a murder, accident, killing in self-defense or suicide. Determine the sequence of events. Verify versions. Establish the direction, range and the number of firearms. Distinguish between real and fake incidents. Ascertain whether the injury is fatal or non-fatal. As we know, Forensic ballistics deal with the examination and analysis of various evidence related to firearms encountered at a crime scene including the effects and behaviours of explosives and projectiles. Keeping this in view, it becomes pertinent to know every minute detail pertaining to this specific field. It is indeed important for one to study the advent of firearms use of specific components such as propellant, primer, bullet and pellets, classifying features by which firearms are categorized, etc. All this becomes a basis for the identification of firearms, projectiles and cartridge cases procured from the scene of crime. Now this is time for your self-study. If you want to learn more for enhancing your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for assignments, MCQs, quizzes and LORs 
and other material. Till then, keep studying. Goodbye and good luck.